Neanderthals were once thought to be primitive cavemen, driven to extinction by smarter modern humans. But studies have revealed that they were actually sophisticated beings who cared for the bodies of the deceased and performed burial rituals. Indeed, Neanderthals are known to have buried their dead and exhibit mortuary behaviors that are difficult to interpret, and there was significant diversity in mortuary behavior among the Neanderthals. However, the Neanderthals' behavior was highly variable, including their relationship with the dead. A few dozen Neanderthal burials have been discovered in Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. Such discoveries have been described as extraordinary, but evidence of Neanderthal burials and culture is clear and unequivocal. Here are the top 10 most amazing Neanderthal burials ever unearthed. The Neanderthal skeletons of Le Moucher and La Chapelle of France are laid to rest in a sleeping posture. The La Ferrassi Neanderthal is also buried in the squatting position with drawn-up legs that has become common in the more recent archaeological levels. This posture in prehistoric burials has received a lot of attention, and many investigators believe that the intention was to return the dead man to earth in the same position he was in the womb. What's more, some of the skeletons in this position appear to be tightly bound, possibly to prevent their re-entry into the world of the living. While these findings could point to a belief in an afterlife or ritualistic behavior, it is also possible that these actions served a more practical or symbolic purpose within the cultural context of Neanderthal societies. Indeed, they were our human equals in many ways, and they clearly buried some of their dead at times. The Neanderthals were intelligent. They had brains the same size as early modern humans whom they competed with, and they were very clever. Pleistocene animal remains were discovered in another French cave, including mammoth, horse, cave hyena, woolly rhinoceros, reindeer, and cave bear bones. Mammoth remains were found on all levels, including an unusually large number of molars, compared to other sites. It has been suggested that the Neanderthals brought mammoth heads to the site and ate their brains. Because many of the molars were unworn, these would have been very young or newborn calves, killed in early spring when plant food was not yet available. The interpretation of such evidence is still speculative, and researchers continue to investigate Neanderthal cognitive and symbolic abilities. Another amazing burial is the Teshik Tash fossil, discovered in 1938 in southern Uzbekistan, represents a juvenile male Neanderthal hominin aged 8 to 11 years old. The Teshik Tash skull underwent DNA analysis which confirmed that it was Neanderthal. The skull is larger and taller and exhibited typical Neanderthal traits such as an occipital bun, oval-shaped foramen magnum, shovel-shaped incisors, large supraorbital ridge, and the absence of a strong chin. The bones were discovered in a shallow pit, alongside five pairs of Siberian ibex horn cores. The horn cores were discovered around the grave's perimeter, surrounding the cranial remains. A number of researchers believed the child was ritually buried as a result of this arrangement. The Teshik Tash Neanderthals carefully laid the boy to rest, possibly wrapping him in soft furs adorned with natural symbols. Researchers believe that the ibex horns encircled the small grave in a circular pattern, creating a sacred space that connected the mortal and divine realms. The Teshik Tash Neanderthals may have felt a strong connection to the ibex's spirits. We can speculate that the Teshik Tash Neanderthals continued their nomadic existence in the years that followed. But the sacred boy's spirit lingered among the ancient horn cores, forever a part of the majestic landscape guided by the ibex spirits. Neanderthals fell into at least two basic ethnic groups that coincided with their north-south geographical distribution. Southern Neanderthals from the Iberian Peninsula, the Balkans, the Middle East and Italy had broader and shorter faces than northern Neanderthals from populations living north of the Pyrenees, the Alps, and central and eastern Europe. The discovery of Shanidar IV, a Neanderthal skeleton discovered in 1960, buried in a partial fetal position, prompted a dramatic reappraisal of our ancient cousins. The tight cluster of burials at Shanidar Cave in Iraq, on the other hand, remains extremely important to our understanding of Neanderthals, and may hold the key to learning more about their burial rituals. Neanderthals are thought to have died out 40,000 years ago, with few physical remains remaining.
However, in the late 1950s and early 1960s, an archaeologist discovered the skeletons of ten Neanderthal men, women and children at Shanidar Cave in the Zagros Mountains. Ongoing studies of Neanderthal skeletons unearthed in Iraq during the 1950s suggest the existence of a more complex social structure than previously thought. Archaeologists discovered two more Neanderthal bodies, one known as Shanidar Z, immediately adjacent to and slightly below where Shanidar IV was discovered, as well as additional bones and teeth just below these remains. The bodies appear to have been placed next to a massive rock in a gully-like feature through which water occasionally flowed. The bodies' relative depths indicate that they were placed here at different times, possibly over a period of tens to hundreds of years. In fact, Shanidar IV and Shanidar Z appear to have been positioned in roughly the same position, as if looking out of the cave, and while the remains of the third Neanderthal are too sparse to be certain of its burial position, its head appears to be facing east as well. Meanwhile, Shanidar II was a Neanderthal male around the age of thirty, who suffered from slight arthritis, found lying on his right side. It is estimated that Shanidar II was five feet two inches in stature, which places him just below the average height of a male Neanderthal. He was killed by rocks falling from the cave ceiling, which crushed his skull and bones significantly. The skull had been compressed, and much of his bones were missing when discovered, and the left tibia had animal teeth marks. There is evidence that Shanidar too was given a ritual send-off. A small pile of stones with some stone tool points, made out of chert, were found on top of his grave. Also, there had been a large fire by the burial site. Interestingly, Shanidar too had a higher cranial vault, and other skull proportions that did not quite match up to the average Neanderthal skull. Nevertheless, Shanidar II and IV are sometimes not treated as Neanderthals, and Neanderthal attribution is not universally accepted for other Leviantine fossils as well. According to some anthropologists, this may prove that the Neanderthals of Shanidar had more of a morphology of anatomically modern humans than other Neanderthals, or that the group was very diverse. This points to similarities between the two species, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, but it does not show any inherited relationships within that species. What is becoming very clear is that at least three times Neanderthals came and camped on the sediments beside this cave and placed a body into it. Although it is very difficult to infer traditions from archaeology, this looks like a tradition of disposing of the dead in a very similar way, and it's obviously with care, because two of the bodies are very complete. Taken together, the findings suggest that traditions were passed down through generations, and that Neanderthals may have lived in a world where stories and symbolic ideas guided their actions. If that turns out to be the case, this would still be highly significant in behavioural terms, as there are very few well-supported cases of objects or materials intentionally left with Neanderthal skeletons, one being a partial deer jaw with a young Neanderthal child from this site of Amud. According to scientists who studied the Amud skeleton, a Neanderthal baby whose remains were recently discovered in a cave in the Levant was deliberately buried. The discovery of the bones at Amud Cave near the Sea of Galilee adds to our understanding of Neanderthal culture. Several alleged Neanderthal burials have been debunked in recent years, but the Amud burial may be less contentious. The Amud cave was used by Neanderthals during one of the last Ice Age's cold spells, when the Middle East would have been warmer and wetter than the frozen lands to the north. The infant's bones were discovered articulated, indicating that it had not been disturbed. Amazingly, the ten-month-old infant was laid to rest on its right side in a small niche against Amud Cave's north wall. Although the skull has been crushed and the face has been severely damaged, much of the rest of the skeleton has survived 50, 000 to 60,000 years of burial. According to researchers, the jawbone of a red deer was lying on the pelvis, implying that the deer bone was a ritual offering. Three limb bones of another baby, possibly six to nine months old, were also discovered nearby. Researchers believe the Amud infant was a Neanderthal, not one of the early modern humans who lived in the Levant during the last Ice Age. However, the infant has a round rather than an oval foramen magnum,
the hole in the base of the skull through which the spinal cord passes like a homo sapiens, but some extra strong muscle attachments on the inside of the lower jaw imply the development of powerful jaw movement later in life, and no prominent chin. The presence of these mixed characteristics in such a young individual emphasizes the similarities between Neanderthals and modern humans, say researchers. At the Armud site, other early human remains, including an adult skeleton, have been discovered. Although these bones are not as well preserved as the infants, they are also thought to be Neanderthal. Lastly, the Skull and Kafse hominins, also known as Kafse Skull Early Modern Humans, are human fossils discovered in Skull and Kafse caves in the Levant. Skull Cave is located on the slopes of Mount Carmel, and Kafse Cave is a rock shelter near Nazareth in Lower Galilee. The remains have been tentatively dated at around 80,000 to 120,000 years old using electron paramagnetic resonance and thermoluminescence dating techniques. The brain case is similar to modern humans, but they have brow ridges and a projecting facial profile like Neanderthals. They were initially regarded as transitional from Neanderthals to anatomically modern humans or as hybrids between Neanderthals and modern humans. Neanderthal remains have also been found nearby at Kabara Cave that date to 61,000 to 48,000 years ago, but it has been hypothesized that the Skull Kafse hominids had died out by 80,000 years ago because of drying and cooling conditions, favoring a return of a Neanderthal population, suggesting that the two types of hominids never made contact in the region. A more recent hypothesis is that the Skull Kafse hominids represent the first exodus of modern humans from Africa, most likely via the Sinai Peninsula, and that the robust features exhibited by the school Kafse hominids represent archaic sapiens features rather than Neanderthal features. Differences in the brain case, ear bones and pelvis can still be seen in fossils of Neanderthals and modern humans dating back 100,000 years. Strikingly, the school five burial had the mandible of a wild boar on its chest, but the rounded brain case of modern humans. When discovered, it was assumed to be an advanced Neanderthal, but is now generally assumed to be an early modern human, albeit a very robust one. The body of an Katze adolescent, about 13 years old, was discovered in a pit dug in the bedrock in 1971, with the skeleton lying on its back, legs bent to the side, and both hands placed on either side of the neck, with the antlers of a large red deer clasped to the chest. The red deer antlers at the site and the Amud cave serve as a reminder that the ancient world held countless secrets yet to be unraveled, each discovery offering glimpses into the intricate tapestry of our shared human history. The school hominins and their enigmatic rituals continued to captivate the imagination, inspiring generations of researchers to explore further, delve deeper, and unlock the mysteries of our ancient past. With each passing year, more pieces of the puzzle fell into place, gradually revealing the remarkable story of these early modern humans and their connection to the world around them. The grave furnishings, as we discussed, show that the Neanderthals believed in life after death. Neanderthal man often buried his dead in shallow graves without any special protection, whereas the early Homo sapiens were the first to carefully cover the grave with stones. The dead man was given not only his best weapons, but also food for his long journey. Were these intended as a protection against hungry beasts of prey, or to prevent the dead man from returning? We can only speculate. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.